I was at St Mary's Hospital on a course and saw a patient who had an operation done by Joe Peaton, the American surgeon there, three days before. She'd had her gallbladder removed. She walked into the lecture theatre and you wouldn't have known she'd had an operation. There was a wow that went up from the audience when they realised how recent the operation was. We were all at that time doing open operations and for a patient to get to that stage would have been eight or nine days after the operation, let alone three days. But having seen this in the benefit of patients, I decided we must get this in Shropshire. So I came back and tried to get some from the hospital, they hadn't any money, went to the region, they hadn't got any money, and then said to my wife, I think I'll uh, invest in this. No way you will do aren't doing that, we've got the children to think of, she said. So I then heard that the League of Friends had money on occasions, so I went to see June Whitaker, who was the chairman at that time, and told her what I had in store, and she said, I'll put this up to the committee, do you, will you have to come and speak to them? So I went and saw the committee and she asked a few questions. She told me what it was about and how patients could recover so much quicker from operations. And I was asked one or two questions. Certainly, if we invest this £100,000 in this equipment and your training, do you think you'll be able to do it? To which I said, uh, I think I probably can. Went to the States, trained, came back and tried working on simulators and then the day came on December the 18th, 1990, when I lined up two patients. Both of them were told that I was going to try this new method. If it was successful, they'd be, they'd be home the next day. If not, it was back to the open operation. Anyway, six hours later, after operating on the two patients, both were success, I was able to ring the chairman of the League of Friends and tell her that her investment had been well worth it. Subsequently, many years later, she said this was the best thing that the League of Friends had done in her time as chairmanship. Everything changed because all of a sudden our roles changed from not just being anaesthetic uh, assistants. We were actually cameramen, uh, white balance, insufflators. A lot of the stuff we'd been doing in guiding, but they'd added this other equipment to it as well. Uh, and doing different procedures, but going from an open cholecystectomy, for example, uh, with this large incision and having to retract, and all of a sudden they were literally just dealing through these three or four ports to do the same operation. It was it was a, it was a big step change in surgery um, for not just for the patient and surgeon, but I think for us as, mm -hmm. as a team working around you. Team, it was, it was it very much a team effort, mm -hmm. and, and everyone had to learn mm -hmm. to do this. But we, we were very lucky; we had actually no problems with this, and went forward very quickly. When we started doing these. Uh, it was completely different because all of a sudden you're looking at a screen, we're having to make sure that screen is acceptable for you to carry out the operation and also to be able to keep the patient inflated. Uh, and doing all those three things, you look like, you know, oh, well, I love this going all right for Mr. Evans and the patient's faces. Um, but that was strange, that was really strange for me because all of a sudden you were not looking at the patient, you were looking at the, at the monitor. The monitor of course it's two-dimensional mm. and yet you're operating on a three-dimensional thing and this is where the difficulty comes from off search yeah. is being able to adjust from into a three-dimension but then I have found out subsequently I've got a funny eyesight which allows me to put three-dimensional onto two-dimensional thing which is a great help. So how did you feel about from going from the simulators which you've been uh, leading up to to actually having your first patient? I always had the escape route if it didn't work for instance I would convert to the old yeah. operation. Yeah. Yeah make a cut and the patient would be in the hospital for five days as opposed to one day mm. and would be out of action for eight to ten weeks as opposed to back in full action ten days. Um, so that was the sort of pressure that was on, plus the pressure that had been put to me by the League of Friends and <laughs> do you think you'll be able to manage it? Yeah. Worked alongside Mr Evans uh, from 1984, long time ago. Um, and Mr. Evans used to do all sorts of speciality surgery and decided to bring from America keyhole surgery for lap coles and things. So steep learning curve for us all to go from major open surgery to keyhole, um, which eventually became a day case procedure. Different and a different approach to looking at the procedure and the way we worked. The equipment, looking at the, the TV, the cameras, uh, instead of looking down into a wound, you were looking up at a, a TV screen. Yeah. 
He was quite firm. <laughs> he used to keep us all on our toes. A very good surgeon. A bit grumpy at times. My head eyes are in the back of my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's my <laughs> so David, from when we started doing the, the, the keyhole stuff, the, the, uh, using the cameras and the screens, which we hadn't been used to doing before, uh, and you perfected that, uh, and was forever evolving, do you think, do you think by make, taking that brave step to go and go to keyhole surgery has allowed healthcare uh, and operation to progress as they have into other areas? And, and larger and bigger operations. Well, and, and cut removal and everything would be yeah. done. Uh, uh, renal transplantation can be done now. With it. Uh, you can operate with robots on the heart with them without having to stop it mm. in its early days. Yeah. There's a long way to go, so watch this space for the next 50 years and you'll be yeah. operating from six miles away. Yeah.